Uh, yep, so James Triggs from uh, the Data and AI team in Sydney. Uh, today I'm going to be talking about this unit, which uh, you'll see here, which is also why I don't have the, the fancy virtual background turned on. Uh, but I'll give you a bit of context and we'll be talking through uh, creating competitive advantage with computer vision using this uh, this device here as an example. I couldn't help myself when we had the, the title slide with the, the kangaroo on the front. I had to put the, the bounding box around the head of the kangaroo. Uh, as it turns out, this is actually a, another good example of a computer vision problem. These kangaroos in Australia are really hard to predict what they're going to do and they jump all over the place, including in front of cars. Uh, so it is actually a real application trying to, the smart uh, self-driving cars, trying to figure out, you know, whether there's a kangaroo approaching that uh, could jump in front of a car. From what I understand, we've got uh, quite a broad audience of people on the call. So I wanted to start first with just a little bit of background on uh, what is uh, computer vision. And then I'll get uh, into the demo after that. So computer vision, uh, the things we do with our eyes as humans is now things that the computer vision can do. So as humans, we can look at a picture or video, we can you know, recognize objects in that video, we can read words and text. Uh, we can, as we've just seen, we can see things moving and, and track where things are moving across images and videos. So all those things we can do with our eyes is now possible to do with computer vision. And really what we do is we take the, the, the data that gets generated out of those uh, algorithms and we save that data and we can use that then to derive and find new insights. I think there's a very common stat that 99% you know, of recorded camera footage is never even looked at. And if you think of that, the, the difference a computer vision will bring where it brings that scale and speed that now you can actually start operating on that, uh, that, that uh, vision at much more scale. The way it works is fairly simple. We, we start by taking the images, the video, the live stream, whatever it is, we feed it into some models and those can be models that have been either off the shelf. So that someone else has trained them to look for particular things. Uh, or they can be ones that have been customized for your particular business application. And lastly, that, that then goes into some data and is saved for, uh, for other analytic, analytic purposes. So I like to think of computer vision as a triple threat. You know, the, I was trying to find what's an example of a good triple threat that would be recognized around the world. Uh, maybe it's showing my age, but Michael Jordan stood out in my mind from the Chicago Bulls. He could shoot, he could pass, you know, he could dribble. and he uh, he became such an asset to the Chicago Bulls and really helped them win so many uh, so many world championships. And computer vision to me is it unlocks the same opportunities to create assets for companies. So at the same time, you can create outcomes for better outcomes for your customers through providing new features in the service you provide to them. But at the same time, you can also be improving your operations. You can be uh, doing things faster or more efficiently, you can be achieving cost reduction. And you can also have a much better differentiated service. Because computer vision, it takes time to develop the, these models, you can end up with a, a differentiated service from your competitors. And it's this triple threat combination of these things that really helps drive competitive advantage from investing in computer vision type projects. A couple more slides and then I'll jump into the use case. But, uh, you know, there's there's so many areas that computer vision can help in, you know, whether it's automating data collection where you're, you know, using it to automatically uh, do counts or extracting information from images or videos. It could be on your production line where you're, you know, detecting defects on, on things going down the production line and then uh, taking action on those. The asset tracking, we just saw some great examples of what's possible with the, you know, monitoring traffic movement and things like that. Safety. So if you're in a, a warehouse, you know, are people wearing the hard hats? Are they wearing the, the gloves? Or are your animals being looked after if you've got a supply chain that involves animals? Things like that. Uh, and overall, just going back to that stat of the 99% of videos never looked at, that continuous monitoring. So where you can have the computer vision is always watching the video and being able to then uh, extract information out of that, whether it's you know perimeter breaches or uh, you know unauthorized actions, uh, things of that nature. 
I'm not going to go through all these use cases, but suffice to say, in almost every industry now, there's applications for computer vision. Everything from agriculture, where you you might be looking at the aerial imagery and looking at uh, you know, estimating crop yields and things like that, right through to government, where we've done work in in floods and identifying where where flood boundaries have got to. But today, I'm going to be taking you through a, an interesting example we did in the healthcare space. And just to set the scene, in Australia, the, the federal government uh, launched a Royal Commission into aged care quality and safety. Uh, so this is where they, uh, they get a lot of uh, industry in to understand the problems in a particular area. Uh, they get a lot of research reports. And one of the findings or one of the, the key things they heard in the Royal Commission was that 68% of residents were either malnourished or at risk of malnutrition. And I think for all of us, we we either know someone that's in aged care or we've got family in aged care, uh, we've got friends or, or someone or know someone that's that's in, in the aged care system. And ultimately, we know at some point in our lives we're going to end up in aged care too. And so to have that, that stat that 68% of people are either malnourished or at risk of malnutrition is, is quite a scary thing. And the, the thing about malnutrition, particularly in, as you get older, the effects can be irreversible. Uh, so the yes, being being malnourished can uh, increase the risk of you know, falls and trips, and then when you do fall, increase the risk of you incurring fractures. It takes can mean it takes longer for uh, you to recover from injuries or from um, sickness and things like that. So uh, it, it's it's a really big problem. So we work with a company, uh, Compass Group. Uh, we work with uh, Compass Group in Australia. So Compass Group are a worldwide company. They provide uh, food services around the world. So everything from, uh, you know, they provide catering at mine sites. They provide, you know, office catering. They provide school catering. Uh, but they also serve food in hospitals and in the, the aged care sector as well. And we work with uh, Compass Group Australia to develop this meal vision system that, uh, that you can see here now. Uh, the, the hardware that I'm gonna show was developed by uh, a company we work with called Air Vision. And we worked with developing the, the computer vision models to, to power the solution in the back end. I might just, uh, I'll stop my sharing for a sec so I can give you a bit of demo of the, of the actual unit itself. So the way it works, if you're uh, someone that's in the, the aged care center, uh, so right now in Australia, it's morning, so we're serving breakfast. So the, the person would take their, uh, I've got a tasty croissant here, um, pop it on the scanner. Uh, the scanner asks who, who it's for, so I pick the, the person and that's it. So in that second that I had the device, the, the food on the scanner, what's actually happened, this camera at the top is both a, a normal uh, RGB camera, so taking a photo of the food on the plate. Uh, it's also a LiDAR scanner. And so what that's doing, that's doing a 3D mesh of the, the food that's on the plate so that we can actually take measurements of, uh, of the food on the plate. Once the, the person's then gone and eaten the, the breakfast, I don't know if I'll eat this one. This is, the cafe told me this was a, a stale croissant from yesterday, so uh, I, won't, uh, I won't get stuck into it and take a bite. Uh, but for the people in the in the serving the food in the aged care centre, uh, once the the residents finish the meal and eaten the meal, they just put the plate back on again. Uh, same process. It's now taken a photo uh, of the food and taken more measurements. And so you can see it's quite a quite a seamless and easy process if you're in a busy uh, a busy aged care centre where they're trying to deal with you know COVID and lockdowns and things like that. If they can they can get working on that quite quickly. I'll just jump in and share my screen again so you can see the slides. So let's take a look at what meal vision actually does. Here's an example where the, there was a ham, cheese, and tomato croissant uh, with some salad. You can see the, the served plate on the, the left. So that's an example of the, the photo that I was talking about that was taken. And on the right, we've got the, the plate that was collected. Uh, like a lot of us, if we we're in aged care, maybe we'd uh, 
enjoy eating the croissant and you know we we knocked off and made sure we ate all of the croissant but you can see the salad being played with moved around the plate but hasn't really been eaten the data that we get out of the system is in shown in the table down the bottom so we we know that for the main meal that was the croissant in this case the main part of the meal uh 100 of that was eaten uh, the salad not so much people played with it but uh, they didn't actually eat that food What's happening with the computer vision at the time, we actually use the computer vision to identify the different components of the meal on the plate. Uh, so that's how we can summarize it up into the report shown here. Um, but in the, the back end, we actually have uh, much more granular data around the, you know, the, the meals that were served and, and what was consumed. So the computer vision identifies each part of the, the different types of food on the plate. And then we we map that to the the 3D mesh that was captured from the the lidar scanner as well. At a high level, from a solution workflow perspective, what happens as soon as I put the, that plate on the the unit and the the photo and lidar was measured, that gets sent off into AWS Cloud. Uh, we've built a fully serverless uh, platform running on AWS that uh, processes the, the images as they come through using uh, some computer vision models that we, we built and trained. And then ultimately that data ends up in a data mart. Uh, so the, the data mart then makes that, that available through Tableau. Tableau is the, the, the interface that uh, Compass Group Australia uses. And that allows them to report and slice and dice this data in lots of different ways. So, we can look at the understanding the consumption, the, like what people are eating, what people are not eating. Uh, you can think around for, for individuals where we can track over time their, their food uh, consumption pattern. So if someone's uh, not eating the, the way they normally do, then the, the nurse uh, that operating on the site can actually see that, understand that and, and intervene and understand what's happening. Uh, or it might be the uh, for Compass Group, they're, they're dietitians. So the dietitians, they put a lot of work into you know, innovating around their, their menu. And so they can actually now use this as real data to understand what, what parts of the, the, the menu, what things on the menu people are really enjoying and, and eating a lot of uh, versus what are the things that are, uh, are not, not being enjoyed. And so then they can you know, fine tune and, and incorporate that out into their decisions. So going back to the, the triple threat you know, example that I gave earlier. So first of all, with the customer outcomes, obviously the benefits this delivers for the health of residents in, in aged care. Uh, so now, you know, having this system where, you know, if, if someone's having a problem with uh, with eating, that 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 gets alerted and and that can get resolved. Um, but also for families, so families are often worried about their their loved ones in aged care and are they getting looked after uh, properly. So now they can uh, know that there's you know something in place that's that's helping track this uh, this information and and look after their their loved ones. Um, and if they need to, they can actually go back and see right and understand. Uh, work with the aged care centre to see what was served to their, their loved ones. So it kind of has that, that audit trail and aspect as well. For, for Compass Group, improving their operations. So for the staff on site, as I said, the working during COVID was a very interesting time in, in aged care where you know, things would go into lockdown and, and people weren't allowed out of rooms and, and it became quite difficult. So, you know, instead of having the, the staff having to you know try and keep on top of everyone's eating and, and what's happening they've now got a system that can help do that for them uh in in days gone past people would sometimes have a piece of paper which they'd they'd take notes on around how much uh, of the meal people had eaten but you know that that data you could never really do anything with it because it wasn't wasn't as accurate as as we can measure and it wasn't centrally stored in in a way that's analyzed so so now there's much better systems and reporting that helps power um, uh, power those decisions around food planning I mentioned before. And it also goes to reducing food waste. So if you're serving the things that people are enjoying, people are eating, uh, you're then using up, um, you know, you, you're scraping less of the nutrition that people could be eating into the bin and, 
and, and making sure more of that goes into to feeding people. And lastly, in terms of differentiated service. So for Compass, they were first to the market worldwide with this, this product. Uh, yeah, from our research, we, we haven't found anyone else that's doing, doing anything similar in the market. And the thing is, it takes time to build these capabilities. So they don't, uh, we've been working with Compass Group for about two years now in, in developing this, um, uh, this in conjunction with Air Vision. And the, it, you can see for the benefits for Compass of having this, this technology um, uh, sort of really makes a, a big difference. And it goes back to that point of, you know, this, this combination, this triple threat combination of things computer vision can deliver that helps uh, drive that competitive advantage. I like to think of uh, computer vision solutions as an asset. You know, as the, the system like this, what happens is over time, as you get more and more imagery, the system gets better and better at doing the task that it was uh, set out to do. And so instead of, you know, most, most assets you'd have that depreciate over time, uh, the, these computer vision models is like a, strategic asset that actually increases in value over time because it gets better and better at doing the, the, the job that it was developed to do. I want to just run through a few myths about computer vision and, and, uh, and tips around them as well. So the first one I hear quite often is that we, we can't do computer vision because we don't have the imagery. And if you think about it, almost every channel that your customer is interacting with you has some sort of camera attached. So whether it's their mobile phone with the, the uh, smartphone with a camera in it, whether it's their, their computer that's got a webcam or on social media. So the, the rich source of images that, that flow around on social media. Or if customers are in your store, a retail store, having the CCTV footage so you can see, see what they're doing, where they're moving through the store, or on an operational perspective, if you're in a, a factory or a warehouse, you've got CCTV footage of, of what's happening in that environment. So there's actually a lot more imagery data available than, than people first think. Zooming out uh, from the aerial imagery is, is another one where there's a huge amount of aerial imagery that's that's captured and is available for analysis. So this could be, you know, watching the if if you've got outside inventory. Or customers or competitors have got outside inventory being able to use computer vision to watch uh, watch what's happening or how things are developing on a site or the examples I was talking before with you know looking at floods or, or bushfires like all of that that imagery is available as well and lastly is a fallback documents so then the number of documents that are digitized and scanned are then uh, available so there really is a huge uh, huge treasure trove of, of imagery that's available to do computer vision on the next one you hear is that that needs a lot of training data. And so uh, people think that's the limitation. I don't have the training data. I, I can't get started. What's really interesting with the modern techniques with transfer learning, you actually don't need as much training data as people think. So, you know, with as little as, say, two or 300 images, you can actually get started. The way transfer learning works is you, you take models that have been trained on millions and millions of images. So these models have learned to detect and learn around the, you know, the textures and the shape of images and things like that. And then you're just doing the last, the, the last fine tuning for your particular use case. And it, it actually allows you to get started uh, much quicker than, than people originally think. And the last one is that it's expensive or it's complex. We've done computer vision projects with everything from two-person startups right through to global companies like uh, like Compass Group or uh, government organisations, things like that. So it's actually um, a much more accessible technology than people first think. And really that's come about because of the, the developments with the, the cloud platforms in particular, where uh, they make a lot of this available via APIs, uh, but also they provide that, that scale or, you know, so for Deloitte, we've been able to set up the the infrastructure that makes it much quicker and much easier to build these things by leveraging these CV platforms. The last tip is around de-risking through how you phase the projects. When we started working with uh, Compass Group and Air Vision, the, the first thing we got built for this scanner was actually a, a cardboard prototype. 
that helped understand the, the shape and size and, and how it would work. And then quickly moved into an alpha piece of hardware, which looked much, much more rustic than this, but had a camera and started collecting imagery. And what that allows us to do is to work in a proof of concept phase. And as we're collecting new imagery, we're able to then develop these models, uh, find and fine tune where the model is going to be able to create and add value. Uh, and then once that's at a sufficient point of maturity, get it out into an MVP and put it in the field in a, in a simple product that can actually start you know, being used for, for real on a site. And that then flows into uh, the, the bigger picture of being able to you know, roll that out uh, across a number of centres. So for Compass Group now, this is rolled out in a, a number of the aged care centres that they provide food for around, uh, around Australia. So last thing I wanted to leave you with, hopefully you've seen some of the, the cool things that's possible with computer, vi computer vision, but I wanted to leave you with the thought, you know, what's the competitive advantage you could create with computer vision in your company or your organisation? If you want to find out more, uh, I've got a link to the, the blog article where we talk a bit more around uh, this Meal Vision hardware and how we work with Compass Group and with Air Vision. Uh, thank you, and I'll uh, hand back over to Erica. Thank you so much, James. There are a couple of questions in the Q&A. Um, if you were wanting to answer any of those live and in the moment, or we could take them offline if that's better for you. Uh, happy to jump in and take some questions. Yeah. All righty. Can you see them or would you like me to tell them to you? Uh, maybe let me have a look. Yep. Uh, are any Sydney aged care facilities using this terrific service? Um, uh, I must move my mum there. <laughs> Good question. Um, uh, it's So Compass Group uh, have this out in a number of the aged care centres. Um, I'm not sure where, where they're like. I know there's some in Brisbane, there's some in uh, Melbourne. I don't know the names of the Sydney one, so I'll... Um, I'll have to skip that one. Uh, is there any tracking on food sharing? Uh, good question. So the we can just see the the meal as it was served and as it as it came back. Uh, so we don't know if uh, if people have been if sharing the croissant around or whether they're actually eating it themselves. Um, but in an aged care setting, I think a lot of them are yeah individual mood. Um, individual plates served in front of people or and often they're in individual rooms so there's not a, a huge amount of, of food sharing that, that goes on um uh thanks uh this is where i pitch uh not sure that's something different um are we developing solutions like these with other cloud providers uh using their ai ml surf or only working with aws uh, I think in the uh, examples I've worked with, I've been working with AWS on these projects. Uh, but uh, yes, they are they are done with other cloud providers as well. So it's not exclusive with AWS. But certainly the the projects I've done, uh, I've worked with AWS and I'm familiar with their their platforms. So I think they are all the questions. Thanks, Erica. Thank you, James. That was incredible, and I do love how the live demo came off without a hitch. <laughs> it's always a brave move to do a live demo and I appreciate you taking the time to take us through that. No problems, thank you.